Hello everyone. Welcome to our class in Fundamentals in Accountancy, Business and Management 2. Okay. Um, we will be continuing our lesson on the financial ratio analysis. For today's vlog, we will be answering the exercise problem. Okay. Let's try to test our our mastery of these financial ratios. Number one, next slide. Moving on, we have here the, the problem. The exercise problem gives us the asset accounts, the liabilities, the equity, and the income statement accounts. From this financial data, we will be solving our financial ratios. Number one, okay, these are the items that we need to solve. The liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios, operating efficiency ratios. Let's start with the liquidity ratios. When we say liquidity ratios, that means uh, we are measuring the capacity of the company to pay its current liabilities. Okay, how do we solve this? We use the current ratio, the quick ratio, and the working capital. The current ratio is uh, current assets over the current liabilities. And here in this case, you have 1,450 current assets divided by your current liabilities of 100,000. So it is 14.5 or 1,450%. So 1,450% ABC company is... Is, has the capacity to pay its current liabilities. More so with its quick ratio. With its quick ratio, we deducted some of the other assets. The quick ratio is smaller by 50,000. Why? The current assets is 1,450, but the quick assets is 1,400 because we only included the assets that are easily turned into cash. So it's smaller than your current assets. It is normally, it is normally the asset, the no no the cash or and the account receivable, divided by your current liabilities of hundred thousand. So the answer is fourteen or one thousand four hundred percent. So if you will observe the answers from the current ratio to the quick ratio, there is a slight difference. Okay, we are testing how. The company can pay its current liabilities when we also see the working capital that means current assets minus the current liabilities it shows to us that there is much more uh, enough money we have enough assets to pay our current liabilities next we have the solvency ratio the solvency ratio here is the, the capacity of the company to pay its long-term liabilities. Okay, let's see. The debt-to-equity ratio is total debts over the equity. We measure the, the percentage of liabilities. How much do we rely on outside creditors as opposed to our equity account? Okay, so the, 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 our, it's 92%. It's 1,100 over 1,200. So the debt to equity ratio is 92%. Okay, then we have here the debt ratio of total debts over total assets, which means how much percent of our total assets is financed by creditors or by the total liabilities. So in this case, we have 47 point we have 47.83 percent how did we get this total liabilities divided by your total assets so we only rely uh 47 percent point 83 of our assets coming from our liabilities then the equity ratio okay this also tells us how much sorry this also tells us uh, the, the 
how much percentage of the total assets do we rely on our equity or how much of the total assets is financed by our investors so in this case we have 1 million 200 divided by 2 million 300 so it is 52 percent it is 52 percent financed by our investors now we have the interest coverage ratio it measures uh, our the company the capacity of the company to pay its um, interest expense okay so in this case we have an operating income of 210,000 over the interest expense of 100,000 so that is 2.1 or 210% so the company has the capacity to pay its current liabilities i uh, know its interest expense by 210%. Now we have the profitability ratios. When we speak of profitability ratios, it measures the company's ability to generate profit. Okay, so gross profit margin is equal to gross profit divided by the net sales. It gives us 600,000 divided by 1 million. It is 60%, or that means for every peso sale, your 60 centavos will go to your, uh, what's this, uh, gross profit, okay? So for every one peso sale, 60 centavos goes to your gross profit. But for your net profit margin, we have the net income over the net sales. So here, we use the net income. So net income divided by the net sales will give us 21%. That means for every one peso income, 21 centavos, for every peso sales, I mean, 21 centavos goes to your net income. Okay. Next, then we have the return on equity. This measures the, the how much percentage does the assets of the company contribute to your income. Okay. So net income of 210,000 divided by your average assets of 2,300, that is 9.13%. So that means, um, that means for every, that means your average assets, your assets in the company generates profit, but generates income by 9.13%. Okay, or 9, 9.13. Then we have the return on equity. So for the return on equity, we measure how much income is generated from your equity. So 210,000 divided by 1,200,000 1, will give us 17.5. So that means your average, your equity contributes 17.5% to every income that you earn, okay? Next, we have, okay, now the operating efficiency ratios. For the operating efficiency ratios, we have the asset turnover. The formula is net sales over the average assets. That means, okay, that means, um, how much income do you generate or how much sales do you generate from your assets? So in this case, 1 million divided by 2,300,000, that means 0.43 times. For every 1 peso sale, okay, 0.43 centavos was generated by your assets. Okay. So the fixed asset turnover that is net sales over the average fixed assets, so 1 million divided by the 850,000, so it will give you 1.18 times. So this means that your, your fixed assets uh, contributes 1.18 times for every peso saved. Okay, next, the inventory turnover. The inventory turnover is cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory. This shows how fast 
you can sell your inventories. Okay, how fast do you do you turn around or do you sell your inventories per year? So in this case, 400,000 pesos of goods sold divided by your average inventory, that means eight times. So that means you sell your your inventories eight times a year. Okay. Next, we have the days in inventory. Days in inventory means the formula is 365 divided by the inventory turnover of 8. So that means 45.63 days or at least 1.5 month. This means that you are you 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 your inventory in the business in the company stays at least 45.63 days before you purchase again your next batch of inventories okay accounts receivable turnover that is net sales over your average accounts receivable so in this case this is 1 million divided by 100,000 the answer is 10 times okay Accounts receivable turnover means how fast do you collect your receivables? So in this case, you can collect your receivables 10 times a year. Okay, next we have the days in accounts receivable. That is 365 divided by, divided by 10. So it gives you 36.5 days. That means your receivables, uh, you collect your receivables every after 1.21 month or at least every month next we have okay now we're done congratulations where did we get the answers right if you get if you get your answers right wow you're really doing great congratulations my dear students and now um it's time to say see you again for our next lesson this is at your service, ABM with Teacher Jonah. God bless everyone.